Greetings and welcome to Jeffrey Films. Today we're going to talk about a 1988 horror movie. This, so let's review Despa. Hey. Hi. Well, how many reps can you do? Ah, uh, 15 or 20. More if I'm showing off. Well, why don't you show off for me? I never waste effort in the gym. Besides, I'm beta. You're VHS. This movie starts out at Starbody Health Spa. It's night. There's lightning, stormy weather, and now I see what you did there, and I like it. Exercise equipment attached to the wall? I doubt it will ever be used. It just isn't practical. We have a lovely young lady doing some dance routine in the studio. Marvin sneaks up on her and he gets a kiss goodnight. She's the last one to leave. Then she goes into the steam room. It looks quite relaxing. But then the steam starts to get too hot and it gets turned up and she has to break a window. Then we meet Mike who just had some bad fiery dreams and he hits the streets, need for speed style, and he races down to the emergency room to- Are you looking for Laura Danvers? I'm Dr. Southern. My name is Michael Evans. I'm the owner of the health club where Laura works, where the accident happened. She had some low grade chemical burns, chlorine vapors, all that kind of shit. The next day we're back in the gym and we see my boy Marvin, who we should all recall was in the movie From Beyond, which was a pretty sweet movie. And he's talking to Darla, who's played by Chelsea Fields, who was in The Last Boy Scout, or Tila in The Masters of the Universe. Also, she's married to Scott Bakula, so I am rooting for her to survive this movie. Hi, no problem. So, where do you want to begin? Well, that depends. We get a couple of guys watching the monitors as people work out. They can control the levels of difficulty. I don't know why anyone would sign up for that. It's just like, they could fuck with you anytime they want. A couple of detectives show up, go to Juice Bar for some coffees, and they talk to Mike and Priscilla about the club, and they get it all explained how the tech is actually running the system. And it's actually his uh, former brother-in-law, played by Merrick Butrick, Captain Kirk's son, David. We go to the nice large pool. We've got a lovely Darla who's just swimming and diving off the boards. Why is that nut and screw coming loose? And it does. And luckily, you know, water below. So she's fine. Mike tells David he thinks there's something wrong with the system. But then this talk gets a little too personal. I loved Catherine. She never wanted that child. How do you get things so twisted up? We shared thoughts you'd never understand. Twins. His dead wife, Catherine, never wanted a child. Cops even discuss this case over street meat. They even talk about his wife. She was burned to unrecognizable ashes. That sounds like a still not dead plot twist. Well, Mike's still having bad dreams about it. Him and Marvin go for a swim and Marvin tells him, how was Laura the last person there if Priscilla found her and there were no other cars? I think Priscilla's up to something. Then you got Rhonda the juice bar girl out here pulling pranks. Oh, this thing. Oh my god! <laughs> gotcha! It's just a tomato. That's sick. Here's your shit. Maybe people don't want your hand in their drinks. Mike goes to his office and he hears some weird sounds. And then there's a bird's nest and he freaks out and he goes and yells at David. The lights go off in the girl's shower and the streams start blowing harder and the tiles start coming off the room. I mean, this is the third incident. The girls are getting scared, but a few of them are just like, let's go flirt about a threesome with Mike. I'm sorry about the showers. I want to extend your memberships for three months, no charge. <laughs> Drop by my office and I'll take care of it personally. Do you think you can handle both of us after jazz class tomorrow? I sure have fun trying. <laughs> Robert is working out next to the comic relief Freddy and the machine keeps increasing the weight on it and he just acts like this is normal. Wait, I Maybe break an arm and damage some ribs? Who knows? Mike's attorney bud does not want to shut down the gym until after the margarita party, which I'm inclined to agree. That sounds like a lot of fun. He also says switching the weights to manual would take away the attraction. Probably take away the threat of death too. No way the cops wouldn't have shut that down. Well, Mike goes, picks up Laura from the hospital. They have dinner. She's blind. He asks her to move in. That's a big step. Also, you're taking her to a less familiar grounds and she can't see shit. Girls at the club at night, 
And does the computer control the lockers too? Also, why does one of them have like an arrow spear in it or something? Or a mic show up. Yeah, there's security lockdown and it's all controlled in his office. And then he leaves Laura just to wander around blind. She goes to her locker, doesn't see the dead girl there. Why is the computer saying it misses Mike? And who's the girl that's just wandering the halls? He sees him on the monitor and it's building up suspense, but it's just a masked face Darla, which is just an odd setup. And it's like the last time we see Darla in the movie anyways. So, what the fuck? Mike has memory flashes of his dead wife throwing gasoline on herself, and he explains his frustrations to Laura in bed. The next day, he talks to the Dr. Lilo More, a paranormal investigator, gives him an object of Catherine's, the dead wife, and he says that she, she was crippled during a difficult childbirth and became bitter and depressed and killed herself. The doctor even mentions the bird's nest, which is weird. Says he's gonna look into it. He's gonna come by the club and investigate. You think that your late wife is trying to kill you? Well, somebody could be trying to drive me crazy. For what purpose? My brother-in-law. Cops are following Mike around and David seems to be banging Jasmine. And he says he can't do this anymore. They're hurting people. Is she even real? We can't see her. I want to believe that it's his sister and she's back from the dead or some shit like that. But we don't know. Nancy is the one that disappeared and was killed in the shower. And one of the girls gets a note that says, meet Mike in the basement. You'll only find death down there. It's pretty big and old and not well kept down there. I'd expect to get killed if I was her. And then the lights start flickering, steam starts going, the sprinklers soak her. She starts crawling around and she sees this woman. It could be David in the wig. And then the sprinkler starts spraying acid on her and burning her alive. I mean, computers can do that. Well, I guess it's not David because he stops by to see Laura. I mean, technically Michael's computer because he's going to fix Mike's computer. Super creepy vibes. Someone rings a doorbell, probably saved her. It's a girl who's dropping off groceries and he just takes the groceries, puts them down and shoes her off. But I got to say, I like a girl that can confidently back up like this. Mike drives home and finds the groceries in the same spot. You know, some of that shit has to go in the fridge. Laura's sleeping, but she's fine. His lawyer friend's fucking around on a computer, and he's just like, hey, we're changing the Mardi Gras party to a summer hot party. Like, that's a day away. Have you planned for that shit? Because you gotta get different decorations, all sorts of shit. You can't just change it a day before on a whim. Dr. Levo is searching the basement and he finds acid melted girl as he's doing his Ghostbusters impression and he runs and he hears strange laughter and we get this. I'm guessing that's Catherine. Now I know we're at a gym and that could explain the strength, but I'm thinking evil spirit because well, this happens. Mike's at home and he sees ghost Catherine and she gets his stunt double to jump off the roof and then he wakes up because it was all a dream and then he goes to work and he sees Tom and he sees the watch and there's something suspicious about that. Priscilla's there too and they're up to something and he knows it. They're guilty. My club's being sabotaged. Laura is temporarily blinded and my lawyer's cut the cutest shorts I've ever seen. We don't know it's sabotage, Mike. Tom just playing stupid. He still wants the club, but Priscilla leaves him. Something's happened with David too, but it's it's hard to explain. Michael, I was- Which one of you put the chlorine in the steam system? That could have killed Laura. That steam room door doesn't lock. She should have been able to get out. Mike and Marv turn the machines to manual and the cops join him as they go to David's place. The basement is untouched, but the upstairs is messy and creepy. Mike calls one of his staff and says, keep an eye out for David. 
at the costume party. That should be easy. Cops show up there and the party's going on. You see what I'm assuming is Ghost Catherine as she's adjusting the computer and activating the machines with her hands. Then she tries to convince Jeff that she's there for him while she's wearing Catherine's necklace. And if she is Catherine, should he not recognize her? Nice uh, arms. Uh, you know, I really could get in a lot of trouble for this. Oh, the dreaded face grip kill. Laura shows up in sunglasses, her vision is back, and someone's pretending to be Jeff. Also, Tom is in a skeleton outfit, fucking with financial numbers. And ah! Dude, that could be murder. Laura's tied up now, and we got a pirate sword being dragged across her body. You know that's Jeff's toy pirate sword, right? It's, it's not real. The detective wants to hook up with Rhonda and not do his job, and yep, Jeff is Ghost Catherine, and she can turn on the tanning booth. Mike hears Catherine's voice and rushes to the control room and shuts off everything. And then he opens the cabinet and sees Jeff's pirate costume. So, Catherine seduces and kills Jeff, puts on his costume, kidnaps Laura, ties her up, tortures her, then takes the costume off and puts it back in the cabinet neatly. Scary bitch. The system comes back on and the printout reads, Mike, I miss you. And then he finds dead Jeff. Hello, sweetheart. Welcome to my party. And then he sees Catherine and she wants him to kill himself so they can be together. But he disobeys and gets knocked out. Tom is hooking up with some other girl, but it is not going well. <laughs> Catherine is now David? This is some weird possession stuff. You kill yourself or her? You love her that much, don't you? David, fight back! <laughs> Mike breaks into the sauna room and unties Laura's mouth, legs and hands first, bro. And then he gives her CPR. Marv tries to help, but then... Dude, destroy the pendant, burn it. I've seen enough supernatural, I know how it works. So like, two people go through windows and nobody cares. And Rhonda, she doesn't know how to fix a blender. I like how it doesn't let go of her hand, and no one comes to help her. And then somehow the detective gets sucked into the freezer and some even more weird shit killed by a frozen dead fish. The detective that's still alive finds Priscilla, who's been knocked out, Tom's handiwork, and she either has a really bad concussion or that mirror is about to explode. Okay then. Well, fire starts on the roof and everyone's trapped and now they start to panic. Mike tries to take out the power and it's starting to work. But all the doors are still locked. Nobody can break a glass? And Catherine seems to be on fire again. What are the odds? <laughs> Mike soundly explains to the female detective what happened. That they went in there, they shut off the computers after the power was still already shut off, and then they left. Catherine, she took over David's body. <laughs> Marvin! <coughs> Jesus, you finally got Thank God you're alright. Ambulances and fire trucks show up, so there's clearly some survivors. 
and we get a weird final line from Catherine before some skull blood squirts. Nice try. The end. Well, we never saw Darla again, so she was probably the smartest character and just stayed home and never went back to work. In Europe and Asia, this movie was released under the title Witch Bitch. So, I mean, that's fitting too. In the end, this is a fun movie. It's a lot of crazy crazy stuff. There's so many plots going on in this movie. You've got Tom and Priscilla and they're like trying to steal the club and then like when Priscilla doesn't want to kill people or do bad things to do it, she breaks up with Tom and then he ends up killing her and then you got the, the things all falling apart. Some of which doesn't, it doesn't make sense because you think it's an actual malfunction or somebody fucking with the computers which at times it is. It's David fucking with the computers for his long lost dead sister. But also the possession, the live ghost that is just killing people, making hands explode. Like, it really, it brings you on this journey and then it just, it blows your expectations out of the water. Because I went into this thinking, oh, we're going to get a slasher. Oh, we're going to get somebody that malfunctions with the computer and then all of a sudden supernatural. And it got really fucked up and I loved it. I gotta say, good movie. A lot of fun to watch. So I do recommend. As always, thanks for watching.